Hi, um, dear viewers, I am Dr. Tawa. Um, I'm here to present a very short video tutorial on how to write an extract. So before that, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm with I'm an editor with Proofreading by UK PhD. Um, so we have over 4.6k of followers, <coughs> very active followers. Um, this is the link to our our, our page, so fb.com slash proofreading by PhD. And the full link is given here at the bottom left. Um, so what we do is that we provide um, extensive proofreading and copy editing services based on our experience. Okay. Um, most of the students, from our experience, most of the students actually face a lot of trouble writing proper abstract. Um, so from my extensive experience of publishing um, over three dozens of Q1 and low acceptance rate papers, I would like to share the, the golden recipes to write a proper abstract. Um, why abstract is so important? Why is it? It's just a, a short half a page or maybe one one page thingy. Why is it so important? It is the single key element that is going to determine the fate of a publication during review process or your thesis during your viva process. Okay, when your examiners look at your thesis, the first thing they're going to look at is your abstract. The abstract should, should just, you know, tell out everything in a very nice and a very uh, a, a flowing way to your to your supervisor. I'm sorry, to your reviewer or to your, um, in, in, in the case of journal um, papers, which is actually a bit more tougher to write because the abstract is much more shorter compared to a thesis. Um, so, me as a reviewer, I've reviewed many Q1 papers. Um, the first thing I look at is the abstract. The abstract will tell me whether the paper is novel, whether it's worth reading in the first place. So, <coughs> which is why abstract is extremely important. In other words, it's the first point of contact that is going to tell your reviewer whether you know what you're doing or it's just going to be another old boring paper or thesis. Okay? So, that is the key element here. Abstract. So let's move on to our, our tutorial. It's going to be very short. Okay, I'm going to be very um, direct to the point. Okay, so um, I've shared this abstract in a um, doctorate support group and uh, various other groups in Facebook. It received a, a very good, um, uh, uh, it received many likes and uh, many people have shared it across, uh, which is why I thought, um, let's do a video on it um, to explain it better. So um, I actually published, this tutorial is actually coming from my own paper. I published this paper last year in IEEE Photonics Technology Letters. Um, it's a short letter journal, one of the best uh, in optical field. Uh, it's Q1, so um, it has the right flavors. The paper was accepted in one review, so yes. <clears throat> so um, in an abstract, both for thesis and a paper, you can break it down to five segments. These are the five segments. Okay, so we're looking at straight to the point. Okay, when you start an abstract, you must get straight to the point. Okay, what are you doing? And then how you're doing it. Okay, what was the outcome? Okay, this is how you did, how you did it. What, what, what happened? Okay, uh, why, why that happened particularly? Why the outcome? And you have to conclude. Okay, so let's move into this individual segments in more detail now. Okay, um, so the first segment, okay, so in the first segment, this, this particular red color here, okay, I'm not going to read this out, okay, so I'm just going to tell how I, what I'm trying to say here. So I'm getting down to the point directly, okay, what is it all about? Okay, you, you have to describe um, about what you're doing. Is it, is it a technology? Is, is it a particular field? Okay. Um, or anything that is related to your contribution. So you must, you must always relate this particular part, the initial introduction to your entire uh, material to your contribution. Okay. Um, which particular area looking at and so on. Okay. Then gradually you must move to your um, problem statement in a more concise way. This is still in the first segment. Yeah. Uh, you have to move into your problem statement. Okay. Um, in the case of a thesis, you may elaborate further, but not so much. Okay, I would say for thesis, an abstract should be more or less a page or slightly over a page. That's about it. 
for nectar journals, for journals, it should be uh, it's a few hundred words. That's about it. Yes, it should be very short. You know, this is, this is extremely short. Okay. Um, so, emphasize your problem concisely. The, but always make it short and concise. Okay. So that your reader would not feel bored. Okay. So, it goes like this. You talk about, okay, my field is doing this. Okay. Uh, this is happening in my field. Then, uh, this is the problem. Okay. Then, in the first segment itself, you tell what is the solution. How are you going to solve it? Okay, that is very very important. So you have already talked about your, your introduction. What is it all about? Then you already talk about your problem. You already talk about your problem here, and then you already, you also have proposed the appropriate solution there. Okay, so that's first segment done. So now your reader has an idea of what you're gonna do. Okay, or what is your solution is gonna be. Okay, so then let's move on to the next segment. So since you have already spoke about a solution, so how you are doing it, how you're going to perform your solution. So, um, for social science, it can be survey, it can be sample based studies, okay, or for engineering or pure science, it can be an experiment. So, how did you do it? Uh, you can elaborate for a thesis, but keep it concise. But for a journal or conference paper, uh, keep it as short as possible, okay. Some would prefer to talk about literatures. What are what have literatures um, contributed to this particular solution or similar solutions? You can do that, but normally it won't happen in a paper. You can probably do that for thesis. Okay, when you propose a solution, how you're going to do it, and then you can tell that person A has done this, person B has done this, and what is the shortcoming and so on. But not for a paper. It should be suitable for a thesis. Okay, so <clears throat> that is segment two. Okay, so now um, let's move on to segment three. Okay, now you have already said that this is how I did it. Okay, here th that's what you, you said here. Okay, you spoke about a solution, how you did it. After doing it, what was the outcome? What happened? So now you have to explain what you did, how you did, then what happened. Discuss on the outcome based on your observation what happened. So that's what I'm doing it here. I'm telling that oh, based on my solution. I've gotten something different or something uh, that I've observed. I would like to explain that. Okay. So that's what you need to say. It's very important to say that because then if it's something different, you have to emphasize that to your reviewers, to your examiner. Okay. So that's very important. In, in, in PCs, it could be several problems. So it could be several solutions and then several way of doing it and several observations. Okay. So this can be several observations. Short. And several observations okay now segment 3 is done now let's move to segment 4 so you have achieved an outcome you have observed something but was it correct is your observation correct you have to justify it right so you you you, you did a sample based study and you got this outcome how are you gonna prove that this is correct in an, in, a, in pure science if you done done some experiment you got this outcome or some simulation um, how are you going to justify that? That's correct. So, you have to justify with principles and fundamentals. Very short, direct to the point. What you have to you have to justify with some principles that can support your contribution or your finding or your observation. Okay, most studies will have its own principles which you can relate to. Okay, most uh, fundamentals. But let's say you are doing something completely new like you, you found something new like x-ray for an example when, when someone found x-ray um, so how are you going to justify it so probably you can say this is the first principle of its kind you're allowed to say that okay that that's how you get to publish in papers like nature nature science nature physics and so on okay those are groundbreaking work okay that's 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 how trust me sometimes you do find new principles okay so don't get surprised if you can't find any any print any principle to support your principles okay you might okay so now the final and the most important segment actually if you ask me it's the most important segment uh, because um, I'm, I'm emphasizing this from experience most of the thesis that I've, I've gone through I've, I've read through I've proofread I've copy edit and I've done uh, numerous um, I mean numerous thesis or papers most students don't actually work on this segment 
they just probably stop somewhere here they said that they have done and finished the work um, but they don't say what they've achieved at the end see this is the most important part um, it's your achievement it's your no it, it, this is where you tell how, how much your findings have contributed to knowledge okay so extensively you must write this part with so much spirit and confidence look at me i've said that i've improved something uh, by 8 db okay for engineering 8 db is huge okay same goes to your social science or or, or 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 any other studies you can you, you can you can quantify your contribution you have to say it loud so that so that your reviewer will know that your studies have given an impact to the world okay in your particular field you have done something very new that will change a lot of things even 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 if it doesn't change that's okay but you have to write it in such a way you must have confidence in your own work okay only then you can write it with so much spirit don't think that your work is not good enough okay never think of it because that's what i observe from most students you have to tell that even if it's not groundbreaking you should tell it is groundbreaking okay that's the most important part okay always emphasize on this so this is the flow okay let me summarize again so your introduction your problem your solution done here concise then <clears throat> how you're performing your, your solution how you're carrying out your solution then what have you observed from your solution okay what is in new okay just to just to recall again on the second part the solution you may refer to some literatures that have done some other work um, that is not very good but that mostly is done in thesis not in a paper okay so on the um, fourth segment um, why this particular outcome okay so you are explaining that I've reached certain result and you have to tell why you have reached certain result. That's very important. Okay. And finally, the most important thing is your contribution to knowledge. What have you did? I mean, what have you contributed? What is your groundbreaking finding here? That's very important. Okay. So these, the, these are the five segments. Um, you may practice this. It's very effective. Um, very good way of writing things. Okay, uh, this, this, I've learned this through my experience of writing, extensive writing. Okay, um, so that's about it on for this tutorial. So um, thank you for listening. Uh, please feel free to share this around. Uh, more to come from proofreading by PhD. We definitely will do more tutorials. Um, and also at the bottom there, if you have, uh, if you'd like to comment, um, please comment for what kind of tutorials you would like for future. Okay, what would you like to know? Okay, I'll try my best to to do some tutorials that you would like to hear. Okay, uh, please like my page to follow my updates um, at Proofreading by PhD at Facebook, and you may subscribe to my channel at uh, YouTube for the, for more tutorials. Okay, um, thank you very much for your time. Um, wish you all the best. Thanks.